play longer, but I have nerve damage in my fingers. <laughs> that was pretty good. I did the best of it. Um, <laughs> thank you. Now, because I have a, have a vast DNA, and I travel and journey to discover each of those ancestors one by one by one around the world, and some of those ancestors are in the Arctic. <laughs> and the Icelandic one now. Icelandic, yes. <laughs> I I was guided to build a drum oh twelve years ago. And it wouldn't it was one of those things as an artist if you know an artist no, once an idea comes in your head, unless you do it, it will haunt you. <laughs> it will not leave you alone mm -hmm. until you finally do it and get it out of your head. So I built my first drum, and I didn't know it was a drum. It looked like a ball So I hung it on the wall, and I hung on the wall for two years. And then my grandson was born during the blue moon, and I had just finished my regalia. And Spirit said, oh, hell, I had to do a ceremony for the blue moon night. The same day my grandson was born. That was all lined up ahead of time. So I got dressed in my regalia, and I was about to go to the ceremony. Spirit spoke and said, you need to take the wall drum with you. I'm like, it's a, it's a, it's a drum? I thought it was, an, uh, it was a hanging. So I hung it on, on the, a tripod. And I did my ceremony. And then all of a sudden, Spirit said, now you got to play it. I go, play it? I don't know how to play it. It's a wall hanging. <laughs> and they said, you got to play it. And I played it once for a very dear friend of mine who was a Buddhist nun. And um, she got a vision that in ancient times it was made of bones. I had made it out of bamboo because that was all I could find that would you know, resemble the image I kept getting. I made it out of bamboo. She says, I see it made of bones. So I was visiting Iceland, teaching a seminar in the drum, drum, spirit of the drum seminar. And I told them the story about the, about the, um, the about the, about the wall hanging drum. And, and I had a, a video of it, or not a video, but a, a recording of it. And I played it. And the women there, they're very primal. Very primal. You see them dressed in furs and horns. They're not pretending they're that. <laughs> and they said, you need to come back and teach us how to make that drum. We'll provide the bones. We have one lady there, the keeper of the sacred bones. She says, I'll bring the bones. Uh -huh. So I went back a year later, and we all built bone drums. And we went into deep meditation. And this one here is made out of Icelandic cow ribs. And, because that's what she had. Well, I mean, we don't want to go and kill stuff. And she went to Avatar and said, you know, and, he, and she went to one that does things in a good way. And in Iceland, they are very conscientious that way with the farming and how they treat their animals and so forth. And so she went and got these ribs. I went back and we all built the bone rooms. And I said, okay, everybody, sleep with your drum the first, after the first night and then come back tomorrow and then we'll learn how to play it. So everybody slept with their drums, including me. And then I got a vision of what the drum represented. I remember being in Greenland, I've been there three times, and I was in a little craft store and buying trinkets to bring home as souvenirs. And one of them was car a little fetish, you know, looked like a little creature like, um, out of you know out there. And uh, it was made it was carved out of caribou bone. And it was made of the key ring, and they're small and inexpensive, so I was buying a bunch of them for my family. Well, the woman who owned the shop, turns out we were friends on Facebook. She says, we're friends on Facebook. And uh, so I'm there by myself, and she says, you want to hear the real story behind those that we don't tell the tourists? I said, of course I do. And she says, in ancient times, when a child died, they would take one of their bones, and they would carve a little fetish out of that bone, and they would carry it with them for all times. So they would always be carrying the spirit of that child. That memory came back. And I'm like, that's it. 
These are the bones. They were never cow bones. They were never caribou bones. They were never horse bones. They were the ribs of our ancestors. As an ancestor passed, they would take one of their bones, and these would be from different ancestors, and they would carry it because they're nomads. They didn't settle. They didn't live in houses. So they would roll it up, carry it as a bundle, and then when they wanted to call their ancestors to them for meditation, for guidance, or whatever, they would call them by playing their bones. So this is called the Gateway Heart Bone Drum. All right, there it is. <laughs> All right, wish me luck on this one because I have to be in deep trance in order for this to actually work. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. So. Much distraction. My mind shifted to present and I lost it. <laughs> that was cool. I but that was very was good. good. Yeah. Drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> I did that ever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And one of the ladies that was supposed to be with us was in the hospital dying of cancer. She couldn't come. So I said, we will come to the hospital. So the Icelandic women dressed in their furs and horns and phone drums, they said, I said, well, should we hide them, you know, so we don't create a spectacle in the hospital? They said, no, we're marching right through. <laughs> and so we did. We marched through the hospital, each carrying our bone drums. And then everybody said, where's the party? <laughs> so we, we went to the, the sun room where my client was, was um, waiting for us. And we all drummed for her and brought such healing. That, and she didn't heal from the cancer, but she was able to heal the relationship that was causing the cancer with her, with her mother. And she was able to let go of that suffering between her and her mother and go peacefully without resentment and anger and all of that. So she lived another year. We did prolong it for another year and she went peacefully healed so that she didn't carry any trauma to the other side with her so she could pass on into the light. So it's not always about saving your life, it's saving your soul. And then we get trapped between worlds, between the physical world and the spiritual world in this fourth dimensional world of limbo, where it can't move forward, and they're stuck in the, the loop of their suffering, where, you know, in, in 